بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره سبحانه وتعالى ونتوب إليه ونتوكل عليه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله والسلام عليه تسليما كثيرا أما بعض Last week we talked about the murder and the assassination of the lady from Palestine and we left the issue about the death of the queen because the ghubar was, you know, very hot. We had to let the ghubar settle down, emotions. Emotions from the Mu'ayyideen and emotions from the Mu'aridin. And our religion makes us responsible to be always in the middle. So today we have to deal with the issue of the queen's death because it's the big, fat, purple, and pink elephant in the room. And I thought that the dust was going to settle, but the dust just increased more and more and more and more in terms of the condition of our ummah. One of the lessons of the death of the Queen of England is the fact that the Muslim has to be brought back to his aqidah. He has to be brought back to the importance of the tawheed of Allah. You young brothers, Uthman, Muhammad, you young brothers, you have to come to know who Allah is and who Allah isn't. So this thing has happened and things are happening. The raddul al-fi'l that's going on in the world. As a Muslim, this is a trial, an imtihan for everybody. For everybody. The Prophet in Sahih al-Bukhari, he says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, len lil-abadiyya, len yufliha qawm wallu amrahum imra'atin. A people will never be successful who put a woman in charge of their affairs. There's a fitna, because there are some Muslims who will say, yeah, but look at the Queen of England, and look at the Prime Minister there in uh, that country by Australia, New Zealand, and look at this example and that example, and look at the Vice President of America. They put the affairs in the hands of a woman, and they're successful. That's a fitna. Because although the hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari, this Muslim comes and says, La ukadhibu Nabi Allah Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah, that hadith, that's not true. It's in Sahih al-Bukhari, you're a Muslim. So there's a person who will reject that hadith, although it's from your religion. It's a fitna, the death of the queen. Very quickly, I would just like to say, Lang yuflih qawm, a people will never be successful. Your understanding of success is not the understanding of the success to Allah or his messenger. Our mu'adhin just now did one of the most important sha'iras of the sha'air of al-Islam. And from what he said was, Hayya ala salat hayya ala al-falah. Success is for the people who pray. That's success in Islam. As for people who have unlimited resources and wealth and shah and jah, it doesn't mean they're successful. So you reject and make takdeeba of what the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bina'an ala aqlik, anta. This is mushkil. Her death is a fitna, and people are muftunun. The Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, about success, yu'ta yawmul qiyamati bi rajulin sameen and azeem and fayudaru fil mizan faya la yazinu inda Allah Jannahu Ba'uda. We mentioned that hadith many times. A big opulent man has a lot of money. He owns, she owns the Bank of England, got a lot of money. Big fat because of all the food that he was eating, drinking, couldn't pronounce those things. Lamborghini for every day of the week, horses all over the place, castles. The rich man, he'll be brought Yom al Qiyamah, he'll put in the Mizan, and he won't equal the wing of a gnat. To you, he's successful, but with Allah Azawajal, he's from the Khasirid. Prophet Muhammad says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the richest person in the dunya who was ever created, 
didn't pray, didn't have to heed, didn't obey Allah. The richest one in history will be brought Yom Al-Qiyamah. He will be dipped into the hellfire, just dipped, boom, bang. And it will be said to him, have you seen any khair in your life? He's going to say, Wallahi, yahlifu billah. Wallahi, ma raitu khairin qat. I never saw any good. And he's just dipped. To you, he was successful. But to Allah, he's not successful. So why make the takdeeb of what the Prophet says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, based upon your aqliya, you? Big fitna. One of the benefits of this, ibra, is a dars for you young brothers. This Islam is the future, inshallah, is in your hands. You got to stop mucking about. You got to get serious about your deen. From the names of Allah Azza wa Jalla, he is al hay You know, you have a kid. Your wife have a baby. She's going to have a baby. Call him Abdul Hay. Allah's name al hay the one who is ever living perfect life. al hay the greatest ayat of the Quran, ayat al-Kursi. What's the name in that ayat? Allah. Allahu la ilaha illahu. al hayyul al-Qayyum. Allah is al hay He doesn't die, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every name of Allah, his asma, all of them, ta'ud ila had al-ism. All of them. If you are not al hay, if you're not living, you can't see. He's al basir He's al sami He's al qawi He's al mateen He's al alim All of his names go back to this ism. If the thing is a sanam from the asnam, no life, how can he be your ilah? How? How? And for that reason, we have to worship him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to worship him. Allah told the Prophet in the Quran and told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Huwa al Hayyu, La ilaha illa huwa, Fad'uhu, Mukhlisina lahu deen. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Because he deserves it. He's the only one who lives forever. He is al Hay. There's no God worthy of worship except him. So you make dua to him and you worship him alone and only be afraid of him. He ordered us because he is al hay. Ya Abdullah, you're a businessman. Your business is not doing well. You're a student. You want to get married? Then rely on Allah. He is al hay. He doesn't die. Muhammad died, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Past presidents, presidents in America, they died. Past kings and queens, they died, and they'll continue to die. And that was the dua of the Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ya, ya Abdullah, ya Muslim. The Prophet used to make a dua, and he used to say to Allah about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ant al hay al la yamut, wal insu wal jinn yamutun. Oh Allah, you're the living, and you never die. But all of the human beings and all of the jinn will die. The jinn, the malaika, as Allah wills. The ayat of the Quran. Kullu man alayha fan. Kullu man alayha fan. Wa yabqa wajhu rabbika dhul jalali wal ikram. Everybody's going to die on this earth. Ya akhi Abdullah. You afraid of people for what? You afraid of poverty for what? You have to apologize. For what? For what? Our masjid, we have to send out a tweet so that we could be politically correct. And we have to allow the local Christians in singing, long live the king, long live the king, the national. For what? Why do we have to do that? We're Muslims. What are you afraid of? Again, I repeat, we don't go out celebrating, clapping, and whistling and having ihtifala. But Allah is al hay Allah alone. And that was the dua of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's who we worship. Now listen, like all of the names and attributes of Allah, his asma wa sifat, fi ba'diha, we have al musharaka We are ahya, Allah is al hay you're living. Allah has knowledge, you have knowledge, you see, Allah sees, you hear, Allah hears. 
But Allah's names and his attributes, as he said in the Quran, Laysa kamithlihi shay, wa huwa samirul basir. Nothing is like unto Allah. We may have those things, but nothing is like Allah. Allah is al hay, and you also will hay. But look at our hay. This one over here, a smell comes out of him. This one over here, his breath doesn't smell well. This one over here has to sit on the chair to make salah. This one over here is jahil. This one over here, he's afraid of ants. He's afraid of mice. This one over here, he lost his teeth. That one over here is going majnoon. His life. This one over here is sick. That one over there got sciatic and on and on and on. Your life, your hayat and my life is naqisa. As for Allah, la la wallahi. That's why we only say wallahi. We don't say wa nabi. I swear by my father, I swear. No, we say wallahi. Because everything else is weak and it's going to die. Everything. From what's going to die is the queen. Yeah, <laughs> Abdullah. We don't have a fraction of the wealth that that lady had. Combined, we don't have a fraction of that wealth. How is that wealth going to help her? How is that wealth going to help her? Another issue concerning the queen. You know you have this thing in Islam. The Arabs know it, but everybody should know it from the Muslims. It's called Raddul Jamil Bil Jamil. We don't have to translate that to any Arab. Rad al Jamili bil Jamil. When someone does good to you, you do good back to them. I talked about this last week, about our children. The mother and the father break their backs for the kid. And all they want that kid to do is learn your religion and pray. All they want that kid to do is go to school and don't be a knucklehead. All they want that kid to do is appreciate the khidmah. But the kid doesn't know al fadl because he's living in a time where there's a paradigm shift. Fit him, fit him. Muslim. You know those hadith the Prophet used to tell us about the fitness coming. We're living in that time now. Before, the things used to take a long time. World War I, there would be a change in the whole dunya. World War II, another change. Nah, it's going quickly now. Corona, and then this, and then that, and the fitting, they're just coming. Paradigm shift. Muslims don't know what we're doing. Times of fitna. Raddul Jamil bil Jamil. Do you people remember how my eye operation? And I came up here and I told you we should be appreciative of the NHS. The NHS. Because back in our countries, we don't get this type of khidma and this type of service. And we shouldn't be heavy on this system. How many times did I get on this member and I told our Shabbat, don't be extreme. Don't support this extremism. How many times did I get on this member and say, as it relates to this country, let us not be heavy, fuqala, on the system by lying and cheating. And where are the problems as it relates to antisocial behavior? You heard it before. Before the death of the, the queen. Raddul Jamil bil Jamil. Two points. Number one over here, Akhi. The queen is the leader of the Church of England. The Church of England. Do you know what that means? Christianity. And you don't know your position as it relates to what Christianity is and what it isn't? And therefore, what's your motive as it relates to the leader of that? The other thing is, the queen was responsible for the NHS. The queen will get her reward in the dunya. The word come. You know her, her dictionary, how much? It's not in her dictionary. Whatever she wants, she can buy. You get your reward in your dunya. But the point is, right here in this masjid, I said to our community, we appreciate the NHS. Radul Jamil Bil Jamil. I told you last week when we were talking about the other lady, that that lady was courageous giving up her jinsi in America, living in America, and making tothiyah for her people. I told you about that. Raddul Jamil, being balanced. But praying janazah for her, haram. Making umrah on her behalf, haram. Making dua for her, haram. Allowing people come in here to play horns and to sing, long live the king, God bless it, haram, haram, haram. That's something, and this is something else. 
But let's go back to the Prophet of Islam. Didn't I tell you last week that Abu Talib, he protected Islam when the Prophet was weak in Mecca and only after he died did Quraysh start really turning up the fire on him in Mecca. And when he was dying, look at the Raddul Jamil. The Prophet came to Abu Talib and said, Ammi, qul la ilaha illallah, kalimatan uhajalaka biha inda Allah. Just say la ilaha illallah. You never prayed, you never fasted, you never did any, you, oh, you protected us. Raddul Jamil. If you say la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, I'm going to be a hujjah for you. You go to Jannah, inshallah. That he was appreciating what his grand, his uncle did. Raddul Jamil. So anybody who does good to you, anybody, then do good back to them. Don't be like those people who come to the masjid, you hear the khutbah, you take it out of context, then you go to the popo and try to get the po Hey, the Muslim's trying to help you. What are you talking about? Raddul Jamil. Look at, look at what happened. The Prophet left Mecca, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after Abu Talib died. He was getting beat up. He owed the people money. His companions were getting killed. He needed help. He left. He went to Ta'if. Ta'if is about 90 miles from Mecca. Driving a car right now takes you an hour. And the heat, the harara of Mecca is on another level. On another level. It takes about an hour in a car. How long did it take for him and Zayd ibn Haritha to walk every step? And he still doesn't deserve to be worshipped. Tadhiya for his religion. A raju. He went to Ta'if. Trying to get help. And what did the people of Ta'if do? The people of Ta'if sent their kids and they started hitting him with rocks. Not little rocks. Not little rocks. Rocks hitting him in his head. He was bleeding down his body. You're going to be tried. He was tried and he's a seed of Benny Adam. The only thing is, he gets hit with rocks and he still has Salab in his deen. We get a kerima, not even a kerima. They make a nef, and we, 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 we start a pilot, just blowing us in the air. Oh, I don't know. The prophet went, they threw the rocks on him. As he was coming back, you all know, the angel came, Jibril, Ya Muhammad, you see the mountain air, the mountain air? I'll take these two mountains, be and I will smash these people. What did he do? Let someone do bad to us. We won't forgive him. And he's our family member. We won't forgive him. We still bear grudges. He's our family member. The Prophet وسلم, said, nah, leave him. Maybe it's going to come from their loins, children who are going to worship Allah. And that's what happened. How many of us put in that position? And these people are going to say, Muhammad is barbaric. Muhammad mutakhalif. La ya learn your deen. Muhammad was Rahim, Rauf Rahim. Wallahi. He said, nah, leave him. And he walked back to Mecca. Listen, when he got to Mecca, he had to stop on the outskirts of Mecca, in the sun. And he sent his ex slave, Zayd ibn Haritha. Ex slave. He has no wazin in the mujtama. Hey, Zayd, I can't go in there without getting protection. I need you are from the human beings. I know Allah is al-Hafiz. I know Allah is al-Hafiz. Walakin alayna takhid bil asbab. Zaid, go and ask Fulan and Fulan and Fulan to give me protection. Zaid went in and he went to the first person whose name was Al-Akhras ibn Shuraih, a thaqafi from the big boys of Mecca. He was a don and a boss. He said, listen. Muhammad Al-Amin, you know him, from Quraysh. He's out on the outskirts. He's afraid to come in. Quraysh are going to kill him. We are asking to give him jiwar. You know what that man said, Al-Akhras? Although their culture, their culture was, how are you going to let one of your own people get put out in a desert like that? What kind of stuff is that? How? Al-Akhras said, hey, hey, hey. Ana halifun ala Quraysh. I'm an outsider. I'm an outsider. I'm not from Mecca. I came to Mecca and I got money and I got power. But I'm, I'm an outsider. I got a green card. I got indefinite remain to leave. <laughs> That's what I have. I got indefinite remain to leave. 
So whenever I go, I come back, they take my jinsia. I'm Halib. I'm not white. I'm not real. So he's scared, scared. That's the politicians. That's how it is. He, but he has some, he had a point. Quraysh won't accept a ha Halif. You're going to give someone protection over us? And this issue is in the Quran. When Jaraka ahadum min al mushrikeen, fa'ajirhu hatta yasma'a kalam Allah. This is a big thing in Quraysh's stuff. He said, not in for me. He left. He didn't beg him, give me the dough, give me the dough. He left him. He went to the next one that the Prophet mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His name is Amr. His name is Salim ibn al-Amr from Bani Amr. Bani Amr. Hey, you know Muhammad al-Amin. He's out there. He needs help. He's afraid to come in because this and that. His name is Suhail ibn Amr from Bani Amr. Suhail said, huwa laysa li. I can't do it. I can't do it. La yajir Beni Amr out of Beni Kaab. My relatives, Beni Kaab, they have a higher place in society than me. They're higher. We're Beni Amr. I have some juice. I have some power, but not like Beni Kaab. If I do this, they're going to be mad at me. I'm not putting my hand, myself in harm's way. He said, no. Now listen. He went to the third one. His name was al Mutam ibn Adi. Al-Mut'im ibn Adi, kafir in Mecca. He was with the big boys. Hey, Hamid is out there. You know him. al amin the Quraysh, he's afraid. Would you give him the jiwar? He said, one of the sons of Quraysh, the Arabs, the Arabs of Quraysh. Sometimes I want to say, radiallahu anhum, but I can't. Because the Arabs of Quraysh were the real Arabs. They were the real Arabs. Now the Arab has the nerve to come today and talk as if he's better than somebody. And he's like daif. He's always accepting the dhalil and daf and adenu. Always. That's what we have today. <laughs> and Mutam got upset. He told him, of course I'll do it. I'll protect him. Go tell him no. Come. He went to the Kaaba with his sons. He told his sons, put your weapons on. Can you imagine having five, six, seven, eight sons? And all of them are rijal. All of your sons are men. Put your weapons on, boys. They went to the Kaaba with their stuff, and they were standing, posturing. He said to Quraysh, Ha anada al mutam ibn Adi. Here I am, al mutam ibn Adi. You know me. I have given the jiwar to Muhammad. Man adahu adhituhu, anyone who bothers him, I'm going to bother you. The leader of Quraysh, Abu Jahl, wa ma adraka, men Abu Jahl, he was the boss of the whole thing. He was the mastermind. He was the leader of Quraysh, a force to be reckoned with. He came and he went right to him and Mutam. He said, listen, Mutam, are you following and believing in Muhammad or are you giving him the jiwar? Because it's two things. If you're following him, I'm not going to accept that because it goes against our taqalid and our adat. But if you give him the jiwar, that is from our custom. I can understand that. He said, Bal ajartuhu. I'm just giving him, I'm giving him the, the, um, the, 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 the safety and security. Abu Jahl said, Idhin ajarna men ajartum. We're going to give him support the way you did. And he left him. Listen to what happened. He had protection now in Medina, in Mecca. And that protection started to grow. People started to accept Al-Islam. When the Prophet went to Badr, he went to Medina and had the war of Badr. Listen, when he had the war of Badr, Abu Jahl was killed at Badr by two young Muslim boys. We're going to talk about them today, later on, inshallah. Two young Muslim boys. <coughs> listen, listen. After the war of Badr, the Prophet ﷺ took 70 slaves of the Ashraf of Quraysh, 70. Could have killed them. You know what he said? He said, if Al-Mut'im Ibn Adi was alive, and he came to me right now, and he asked me, Ya Muhammad, let these 70 people go for me. Rasulullah said, لَسَلَّمْتُهُمْ لَهُ I would have given them to him. Why? Raddul Jamil, Bil Jamil. 
I remember what he did for me. I remember when I was weak and I, I needed help, and he stood up like a man against the people and against the common opinion. That's giving good back. For, someone employs you, yeah, you don't steal from the man behind his back. Someone is your friend. Stay true to him, not behind his back, stabbing him in, your, in his back, two faces, do which hain. So in our religion, we have this issue of raddul jamil bil jamil. We acknowledge the Jamil of any non-Muslims, any one of them. But we got to be balanced. There's an ayat of the Quran I want to share with you guys. The statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَيَوْمَ يُعْرَضُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا عَلَى النَّارِ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ That these those people who disbelieve, they will be put in front of the hellfire. They will be presented with the hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, أَذْهَبْتُمْ طَيِّبَاتِكُمْ فِي دُنْيَاكُمْ You people, in your dunya, you exhausted all of your tayyibat. All of those good things that you did, whatever it was, you got the reward for it in the dunya. أَذْهَبْتُمْ طَيِّبَاتِكُمْ فِي دُنْيَاكُمْ فَاسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِهَا And you in the dunya having a good time. You did what you wanted. All of that happened. Felium, Yom al it's a different story. Felium, today, Yom al on this particular day, it's a different set of issues, a different kettle of fish. Different kettle of fish. Yom al you're going to get the adab al hun. Bima kuntum tastakbiruna fil ardi bi ghayr al haq, wa bima kuntum tafsukun. Yom al qiyamah it's a different, you're going to be in the punishment of the knot of Jahannam because you used to be arrogant in the earth without the haq. From the names of Allah is Al Mutakabbir. Al Mutakabbir. He's Al Mutakabbir. And we can't have any niza with him in that. Allah is Al Mutakabbir. You can't be Mutakabbir. I can't be Mutakabbir. The one who has money, and this is one of the big fitness of having money. The mutakabbir is the one who doesn't listen to the haq. And he looks down upon people. One of the great scholars of Islam during our time, he said that many of the Muslims, they have a characteristic that is a sifa, that is fir'awniya. It's like fir'awn. And that is, when the siha is given advice, we don't accept it. When advice is given, we don't accept it. We don't want to listen. We're going to do it our own way. So I say here, khwani, let there be no doubt. It is not permissible in the religion of El Islam to do salat to janazah over non-Muslims. It's not permissible in El Islam to allow non-Muslims to come into our masjid to sing songs. This is not permissible in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is not our deen. And we don't have to apologize for that. And tell me, Billahi alaykum, I'm asking you by Allah, when did any Muslim, especially the Arab Muslims, because the Arabs are rums of El Islam, when did any Arab Muslim die and we saw people allowing the Muslims to come to their church to make the adhan? And they saw the Muslims could, they, they were making it off and the, 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 the respect of our leaders. When, when did that happen? Umar, radiallahu anhu, it's been reported by Ibn Khaldun, and Imam Ibn Kathir, that when he went to get the keys of Baytul Maqdis, he was sitting in the courtyard. Salat time came. It was time Salat. He got the wudu, he made wudu, he wanted to pray. The, 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 the patriarch, the guy in charge of the church, hey, he said, Umar, pray here, pray here. It'll be an honor for us. Umar said, I'm not praying inside of a church. And it was the courtyard. I'm not praying inside of a church. I don't want the Muslims to come and think that this something is okay. And what we do is we allow people to come inside our masjid. Why is the question? أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ونصر الله تعالى توفيق والسداد الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Some people may be in the audience and say Come on man, this horse is dead This horse is dead, leave this horse Well I had to talk about it because it's my first week talking about it I had to address it But the issue is still real The issue is real as it relates to our children, as it relates to some of us, as it relates to what's going on in our ummah, if these basic issues are not comprehended and understood, our religion doing our watch, doing our harasa, our harasa, we're on watch. 
our religion is going to yetabakhr, it's going to just fade away like the smoke of the dukhan, the dukhan of the bakhur or something like that. Ummat al-Islam, have izzah in your religion. If we look for respect and izzah outside of this religion, Allah will give us the reward of that. And the jaza of looking for izzah outside of getting it from al-Aziz and what he legislated is that you're going to be the leel. Allah is going to put you down. And I look at some of you people, you know our grandfathers, our grandfathers because of the politics, the siyasa of the queen, our grandfathers took certain mawaqif and they had certain raddul af'ahi from where we come from. I'm not going to mention those places. I'm not going to mention those places, but you know what I'm talking about. And then we come today and we have people singing songs, God bless the king. God bless the You have slapped your forefathers in the face. You just slapped them in the and you spit on their grave. I say to you, don't say anything. If you don't know what to say, don't say anything. Whoever believes in Allah on the last day, let him say good or let him be quiet. Don't say anything. Don't go extreme to the right. Don't go extreme to the left. Be in the middle. So as people are enjoying the democracy of Europe, democracy, freedom of speech, I'm saying to you in Aqidah, theology, theology, there's a clear position as it relates to the Christians. Allah refuted the Church of England. Allah refuted the Christians in the Quran. And to continue to finish, one of the refutations was this. Allah said about himself in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَمَا بَيْنُهُمَا فِي سِتَّةِ أَيَّامٍ وَمَا مَسَّنَا, وما مسنا مِنْ لُغُوبٍ Allah created the heavens and the earth and everything between them in six days. Six days. And he never was overwhelmed, never was overcome with fatigue. Never. The Jewish people believe Allah created, in our religion, he created things Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. The Jews believe on the sixth day, Saturday, Sabbath, Allah rested. It's taraha, took it easy because he was tired. The Christians believe, the Church of England, my mother, the Church of England, they believe that Allah created Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so they do Sunday. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, he rested on Sunday. This ayat was revealed. Allah is alive, al hey, He doesn't rest. That's kufr. This is the belief of the one that you want to make umrah for. This is the belief of the people, my mother and other of these people, who they don't believe in Allah. So let us learn our religion and let us read the book of Allah and let us be men. And let us not allow the kuffar sons of Mut'am ibn Adi be better than us. No one's asking you to go to the Kaaba with a silah. We're just saying stand up as men. Stand up as men in Al-Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the quwa the and the power that we need just to be regular Muslims. And may he divinely protect us and our ummah from those things that are harming us. And may Allah ta'ala give us leaders, inshallah, who stand up for the haq and they put the truth out there and they defend the truth. And may he protect us from being of the atba of those leaders who are weak. But verily, we get the leaders who we are similar to them. Aqim as-salat, yarhamakumullah.